Hey everyone, I'm Charles Judd, and welcome to this part two video covering the remainder of Blueprint subsection 1.1c VLAN technologies. In the part one video dedicated to this VLAN subsection, I already discussed access and trunk ports, and we looked at the native VLAN. I also briefly mentioned VTP and the concept of VLAN pruning, which are a couple of topics that will be covered here, among other things. In this video, we're using the exact same topology and configuration that we ended with in our part one video, which by the way, you can find a link to in the video description. We configured two trunk connections on switch one, and by default, those trunk links are allowed to carry all of our VLAN traffic. If we say show interfaces trunk, you can see that reflected here. You can see that we're allowing all VLAN traffic over those trunks by default. VLANs 1 through 4094. Now you can see from our topology that we're only using VLANs 10, 20, and 30. And in the previous video, we changed the native VLAN to VLAN 100. So we're also using that one. Now one of the major problems that we need to address with layer two architecture is unwanted or excessive traffic on the network, not only for performance reasons, but because that's a good security practice. VLAN pruning allows us to effectively prune out or to limit the VLANs which are allowed to cross a trunk connection. So first let's examine manual VLAN pruning. This is really easy to implement and there are a couple of options for that. So let's go under global configuration mode and let's say interface range gig zero slash zero through zero slash one will get both of our trunk links at the same time. And the first way we can do this is to manually prune a specific VLAN from the trunk link. So let's say that I want to explicitly disallow VLAN 200. We could just simply say switch port trunk allowed VLAN. And the keyword we want to use here is remove. Now notice we can do all, we can do an exception, we can do none. We have a lot of options here, but if we're wanting to specifically remove a VLAN, we wanna say remove, and we wanna follow that with the number. So I can say 200. Now, if we break out of here and again say show interfaces trunk, notice that the VLANs allowed on the trunk have changed to reflect that. Now we're allowing one through 199 and 201 through 4094. This method works if VTP pruning is not enabled, which is another method we'll examine in just a bit. We can also explicitly determine the only VLANs we want to be allowed over the trunk links. So let's go back under interface range gig zero slash zero through zero slash one. Let's say switch port trunk allowed VLAN, and we can follow that by the numbers of the VLANs that we want to allow. So let's say 10, 20, 30, and 100. So that's all of our active VLANs, and those are the only ones that's going to be allowed over the trunk link. Let's again say show interfaces trunk, and now you can see the VLANs allowed on the trunk are only those that we're actively using. Let's go ahead and remove all of these manual prunings. We can arrow up to that original command. We can go to the beginning and prepin that with the no keyword to take that out. Let's also get the manual pruning of VLAN 200 as well by adding no on there. And we'll just verify that once again, we are allowing all of the VLANs over our trunk connection. Now, before we examine VTP pruning with VTP, let's talk about how we can configure VTP, virtual trunking protocol. VTP is of course used to distribute any VLANs that we create to other switches in a VTP domain. And that reduces administration in the network and it allows us to simultaneously configure the same VLAN everywhere from a single master switch. This is a Cisco proprietary protocol and that's available on most of the Catalyst series switch models. A few necessary guidelines for configuring VTP is first of all, all switches must have the same VTP domain name. All switches must also run the same version of VTP. They must have the same VTP password if you have VTP security configured. If you have multiple switches active as VTP servers, 
They should have the same configuration revision number, and that number should also be the highest in the domain. You also want to know that there are three versions of VTP, versions 1, 2, and 3. Version 2 is pretty similar to version 1, with the major difference being that token ring VLAN support was added. If you aren't using token ring VLANs, which you probably aren't these days, there's really no reason to use VTP version 2. VTP version 3 added support for extended VLANs and the ability to create and advertise private VLANs, which we'll discuss later in the network security section of our blueprints. So let's look at both methods for configuring VTP. First, if you're using an older switch with an older iOS, you can do that from VLAN database mode. So we can say VLAN database, and on my particular version, you're gonna see that I get a warning telling us that it's recommended to configure this from global configuration mode, which is actually what we're going to do. But I wanted to let you know about that just in case you're using an older version of iOS. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is go under global configuration mode. And first of all, we wanna set up a VTP domain name. Now, I've already done this. If you watched the previous video in part one, you'll know I already have VTP configured on these switches so that those VLANs are being handed out. But I will go through the commands just for completion so that you know how to do that. So first let's set up our VTP domain name by saying VTP domain, and I will call that CCIE. I get a message telling me it's already set to CCIE again because this has already been configured. Now we wanna set the VTP mode of operation by saying VTP, and if we look at contextual help, the option we wanna do is mode. That's gonna allow us to configure VTP device mode. Server mode is the default mode for Cisco switches, and that allows a switch to create, modify, and delete VLANs. Client mode is gonna mean, actually let me look at contextual help so we get those on there, so we can see those. Client mode means that the switch is unable to make any changes to the VLAN configuration. So if you wanna create a master switch that controls everything, you would put all other switches in client mode. Now in this topology, switch two and three are in client mode. Switch one is already a VTP server, but again, going through these commands for completion so that you can see those. And we also have transparent mode, where a switch doesn't participate in VTP at all, and it will not advertise its VLAN configuration or synchronize its VLAN database based on any received VTP advertisements, but it will still forward VTP advertisements onto other clients. And then we also, of course, have the ability to turn VTP completely off. So on this switch, I would say VTP mode server to do that, very simple. And again, I'm told that it is already in server mode, so that's okay. We can also set a password to protect our VTP domain and that would be required on other switches. So we would say VTP password followed by the password that we want to do. I'm not going to configure that at the moment because I don't have a password on those other switches, but that is a good security practice to do. So let's exit. I'm going to clear off some space here and we'll say show VTP status. And you can see our VTP domain name is displayed. Currently VTP pruning is disabled. We can see when the last configuration was modified. We can see we're running in server mode and several other things. Also note that you can see we're using VTP version one. That's the default mode when we enable VTP and that's only gonna support those normal range VLANs. If we wanted to support extended range VLANs, we would need to explicitly enable VTP version three. In this lab, that's just fine. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just gonna leave that as is. Now let's jump over to switch two, just to give you a look at what a switch running in VTP client mode looks like. We go under global configuration mode and we try to say VLAN 200. We get the message telling us that VTP VLAN configuration is not allowed when a device is in client mode. That's exactly what we would expect. So this is a way we can exercise more control over the VLANs in our network if we wanna manage those from a central VTP server switch. Any VLANs we create on switch one, those are gonna be reflected over to switch two and switch three. So let's go to, back to switch one, which is of course our VTP server, and let's make some changes using VTP pruning. VTP pruning is a way we can protect our network bandwidth by decreasing the amount of flooded traffic over our trunk links. 
Now, VTP pruning can only be enabled on a switch in VTP server mode. Once that is enabled on the VTP server, it's enabled for the entire VTP domain. Let me go back to switch two momentarily. You can see if we look at show VTP status, pruning mode is disabled on switch two as well. Once we enable that on switch one, it's going to enable it for both of our other switches. So what VTP is doing is it's making sure that broadcasts are only sent to the trunk links that actually need the information. So for example, if we enable this on switch one, and if switch two doesn't have any port configured for, let's say VLAN 10, then any broadcast traffic destined for VLAN 10 would not be sent over to switch two. Again, we only enable this on the VTP server and then the clients are told automatically to enable VTP pruning as well. So to do that globally, we simply say VTP pruning and we hit enter. So we can see that pruning is now switched on. If we take a look at our VTP status again, we can see this verification here telling us that VTP pruning mode is enabled. If we run that, on switch two, notice it enabled it here as well. And if we did that on switch three, we would also see the same thing. Now only VLANs in the pruning eligible list will be pruned. If there's a particular VLAN that we want to make sure we do not prune from VTP, we can also configure an exclusion for that. And that's done from interface configuration mode. So let's go under interface range gig zero slash zero through one for both of our trunk links. And if we say switch port trunk, and if we look at contextual help, we want to use the keyword that we see at the bottom for pruning. So we'll say pruning, and this is maybe a bit confusing, but what we're actually indicating is the VLANs, which should not be pruned, not those that we do want pruned. So let's just suppose that for some reason we want broadcasts from VLAN 20 to go out to all of our switches. And we do not want to prune VLAN 20 for any reason. We want to use VLAN remove followed by the VLAN number. So we could say VLAN 20. And now no matter what happens, VTP will not prune VLAN 20 from any of the trunk links. A few final topics to cover here within this subsection. First is the VLAN database. Now we've actually already seen that. We can view that if we end and say show VLAN on a switch. This is going to give us a look at the VLAN database. Configurations for VLANs 1 through 1005 are written to this file. This is the VLAN.dat file, and that is stored in the flash memory. If we have a switch running in VTP transparent mode, they are also saved in the running configuration file. If we have a switch stack configured, the entire stack will use the same VLAN.dat file and running configuration. We can see this file in the flash memory by looking in that directory. We could simply use the command directory flash colon, and we would see the VLAN.dat file contained there. If we say delete flash colon VLAN.dat, that's a quick way that we can erase the VLAN configuration for an entire switch. So once we do that, and once we reload the switch, the VLAN database would be rebuilt back to its original default state. We also have the concept of standard and extended VLANs. VLANs 1 through 1005 are considered to be standard VLANs, while 1006 through 4094 are extended VLANs. Extended VLANs are not stored in the VLAN database. Those are instead stored in the running configuration. If you're using VTP and you try to create extended VLANs in VTP versions one or two, you have to be in VTP transparent mode in order to do that. And that's because these VLANs cannot be sent in VTP updates. That's really where we would use VTP version three because it does support extended VLANs. We also have the concept of a voice VLAN. This is a way for our access ports to carry both voice and normal traffic. So for example, if we're passing through a Cisco IP phone, it would still be able to use CDP. And by doing this, the phones can dynamically be moved and they can also transmit VLAN tagged voice data and untagged PC data at the same time without explicit trunk configuration. 
using a voice VLAN is only supported on access ports, not on trunk ports. So really quickly, let's jump to switch two and clear off some space here. Let's go under interface gig zero slash one. And let's pretend we have a Cisco IP phone here. We would say, of course, switch port mode access. And let's say our normal access port would be VLAN 10. We could say switch port access VLAN 10. And we can also additionally indicate a voice VLAN for this interface. We could say switch port voice instead of access. And we would say VLAN and let's say that's VLAN 200. If we break out of here and say show interface gig zero slash one switch port you can see the access mode VLAN, VLAN 10, and the voice VLAN of VLAN 200. So that wraps up a look at section 1.1c for VLAN technologies. In the upcoming video, I'm gonna be taking a look at Ether Channel and how we can configure that. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you for watching. I'll see you very soon with another video about the next few topics on the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure Blueprint.